Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game between Gary Kasparov against his trainer Alexander Nikitin who was also a pretty strong chess player from Russia. Alexander Nikitin unfortunately has passed away in last year in June. So let's see what happened. This chess game is from 1981 from Moscow. So in this chess game Gary Kasparov had the black pieces and this is actually one of the must see chess games of Gary Kasparov. So I'm going to check out this chess game from the perspective of Gary Kasparov. So Kasparov's opponent, Nikitin, also his trainer, starts the game with pushing the e-pawn e4. We have c5, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, e6, d4. Takes, takes, and then knight to c6, and actually this is known as the Taimanov variation of the Sicilian defense. Knight to b5, targeting on d6, Kasparov pushed upon a prophylactic move, and then c4. Developing the knight, defending the pawn with developing, pushing, knight goes back, bishop to e7, bishop to e2, and both players castled. So far, it is so normal, but this chess game is going to become one of the most extraordinary, one of the most incredible chess games of Gary Kasparov. So brace, brace for impact incredible chess game so we have b6 bishop to e3 knight to e5 rook over bishop to b7 f3 so rook to b8 rook over queen up bishop back rook over knight back so so far both players are fighting for the better position there is nothing too interesting so far so we didn't see any break any opening a uh, any opening of the game so bishop to e2 making the same moves waiting moves and knight goes back bishop goes back bishop to h4 so defending the queen bishop goes back bishop to f6 knight goes, goes back and bishop to e5 by Gary Kasparov aiming the king as you can see rook over a rook up bishop up rook over and then bishop back b4 so again, just like I told you, uh, both players uh, didn't do anything radical so far. Uh, they are just fighting for the better position, but we have some improvement by Nikitin. B4, pushing to B-pawn, H4 by Gary Kasparov, knight to D2, knight to F6. And then after knight to F6, of course, Gary Kasparov made a very big decision. He sacrificed his B-pawn for getting in with the knight, but this is a very risky move a very attacking aggressive move by Gary Kasparov so knight gets in both knights are getting little bit too close to the king as you can see so bishop goes back defending the bishop and then Kasparov pushed the pawn and breaking his blessed opening the game e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and knight to a4 knight back pawn up and bishop to f4, targeting the knight, pinning the knight, and Nikitin is advancing. So it looks like uh, white has the favorable position, white has the, ex white has the edge. Also with pushing the pawn, the light square bishop is aiming the a pawn, as you can see. But Kasparov didn't care, he played bishop to c6, attacking the knight, knight goes back, and now maybe defending the pawn comes to mind, but Kasparov says all or nothing, knight to g5. And Nikitin, well, he simply captured the A pawn and he has the pawn majority in the, as you can see, in the queen side. And we can say that white is winning actually in the queen side, but black is winning. Maybe black is very, black has a very serious attack in the king side. So Kasparov's attack is so much more direct and Nikitin's attack is on the queen side. So Kasparov is going after the throat. He is going for the throat. He is hoping to checkmate the king so he is basically looking that big knockout big punch so knight to h5 by Gary Kasparov and both knights are getting little bit too dangerously too close to the white king knight to f1 well let's check out what happens if capturing the rook Kasparov is basically sacrificing the exchange well at worst actually black has a draw with bishop takes on h2 and if queen takes, then knight check. And king moves, knight check. If moving the king to the right, then losing the queen. So 
King has to go back, but we can check the king back and forward. So at at least we have a draw. But in the real chess game, we have knight to f1. Nikitin says, well, I have two extra pawns, so I'm going for the win. He is going for the full points. But Gary Kasparov simply captured the rook. Ooh, rook takes on c1. And then d4 by Gary Kasparov. Well, you might ask what happens if a bishop takes on c8. Then uh, in this position we have bishop takes knight and this is actually losing. Ooh, rook takes on b2 and queen to e5 also attacking the rook. So this is actually a losing position for white. Okay, so in this position rook takes on c1. But Kasparov played a very important move. He pushed the pawn and he is liberating the bishop. And sacrificing the knight is the idea because you can take, if you take, bishop takes and the only defense is with the queen and that's losing the game. So we have queen to f2. Well, in this position, if capturing the rook, just like I told you, capturing on f3 is a very strong move as you can see. And bad things are going to happen. Storm clouds is gathering around the white king. So this doesn't look very good for Nikitin. So we have very important move, but Nikitin was careful. He is defending with the queen. And in this position, Kasparov still sacrificed his knight. Knight takes on f3. And we have bishop takes on c8. But in this position, if capturing the knight, queen to a8 was the idea and how to defend. Let's say capturing the rook, then bishop takes on f3 after moving the king, rook to e2, and this is a rampage attack by black. Surviving this attack is very difficult. Even Houdini would not be able to survive this <laughs> against Gary Kasparov. So a knight takes on f3, bishop takes on c8, and it is black to move. Uh, I watched this chess game actually a few days ago. And after uh, when I was watching this chess game, uh, I couldn't find the next move of Gary Kasparov. I tried so hard, but I couldn't see the next move of black. Although I only think for about uh, 10 seconds or something, but I was pulling my hair, beating my knees. But no matter what I did, I couldn't see the next move of black. Black has a very powerful move in this position, but that move is not a very easy move to find because at first it doesn't look very obvious. So if I give you a few seconds, can you guess the next move of Gary Kasparov? If you want, you can also pause the video and try to guess the next move of Gary Kasparov, the greatest chess player of all times. Okay, so I'm going to give you three seconds, which is starting from now. It is also not rocket science, of course. Okay, so the next move of Gary Kasparov was, in my opinion, the most incredible deflection move that I have ever seen in my life, because the uh, continuation after that move is also as spectacular as the move, as the move itself. Kasparov played, watch this move, unbelievable. Rook to e2. Ooh, baby, what a move. <laughs> did you see this move? If you did, I'm going to give you 10 points out of 10. With stars, with golden stars, a beautiful move by Gary Kasparov. What a shot. Well, after thinking hard, of course, this is actually trapping the queen, <laughs> if not capturing the rook. But if capturing the rook, can you see what's happening? Well, after thinking hard, this is what Nikitin played, rook to e1. And let's check out what happens if capturing the rook, and now can you see the move? Can you see the idea of Gary Kasparov? Let me give you three seconds. If you want, you can always pause. We are not in a hurry. One, two, and three. Oh, yeah. Queen takes on h2. Check. <laughs> Did you see this? Only move, checkmate. What an unbelievable checkmate. So uh, this was the move of Gary Kasparov, rook to e2. 
not capturing the rook for not getting checkmated, but Kasparov played simple chess, capturing the queen and Nikitin resigned. Let me show you the possible continuation. Uh, let's say defending the rook and the knight. What would you do? <laughs> of course, capturing the knight, only move. Checkmate. Wow. I have no words. I think Gary Kasparov, because of this, of course, uh, this is just one of his games, but in my opinion, the greatest chess player of all times. And he has many more chess games like this. He plays like Mikhail Tal on steroids. So, okay, did you see this idea? If you did, well done. Uh, only, I think, strong chess players or some lucky people can see this move. Uh, if you did, well done, actually. Uh, you can always find these kinds of moves, even if you are an improving chess player. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, even, an, even an improving chess player can see these kinds of moves, but when you are playing a speed chess game, or if you don't think for too long, it is very easy to miss these kinds of moves, because you also have to see queen takes on h2, and then knight to g3 is checkmate. So this was the key move, crushing move, and basically after rook takes on f2, Nikitin resigned. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this chess game, and I hope to see you next time. So take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.